Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Chilling Rain, make sure you go ahead and check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, we're back on PTCGO, getting into some Chilling Rain decks. Today we're starting with ADP, and it's really taken a twist in a direction I was not expecting in the Chilling Rain format with a lot of people maining Path to the Peak in archetypes like Ice Rider and Shadow Rider, two of the strongest decks in the game right now. You can't really go down the direction I was initially expecting, which was going to be Krikatoon and Peony based. And at the same time, because everyone else is scared of Path, there's a lot less Dedenne, Crobat and Eldegoss packages in decks in general, and people are opting to instead play Sinsino lists or Inteleon based engines. So the whole... Um, Echoing Horn, Gust, Gust, Gust game plan isn't really what we're going to be seeing with ADP. In fact, we're going for a type coverage box and hoping that the times two weakness that we can boast in a number of matchups is going to be good enough for us to take four or three prize KOs on tag team Pokemon, whether or not we use our GX attack. And especially in these matchups where people are now playing one prize Pokemon, uh, you can then Gust one of those up for the two prize KO to deal with one VMAX and then one Gust play. So... There is still an element of boss going on in here, of course, but much less than before. In fact, you go face much more often with this approach. And you can see we have a couple of gal the Galarian birds in here. We have a very confusing energy line. We'll get into all of it now. But I do still think this archetype has legs. And surprisingly, it is dangerous in a lot of situations. The GX attack is not even used in every matchup. But it still is really important into one prize archetypes. Uh, and like I say, when people are playing the VMAX plus one prize sort of package, you can go down that route. But there will also be a number of games where you just don't GX attack or even use the one energy GX attack just for damage buff. For example, getting that extra 30 damage may not seem like much for like a Zapdos because you're already KOing an Eternatus, but it's a way that you could play around uh, things like Big Charm and stuff like that. So it actually can be important in these sorts of situations, uh, knowing techs as we do now in opposing archetypes. So yeah, this is actually a really strange and innovative way to play ADP and it's been doing relatively okay. I still think there is some weaknesses here. It is a lot less consistent, of course, because we are juggling lots of energy types going on. We only have like two ofs of all of our attackers and we hope that we can pick them out of the right uh, sort of moments and whatnot. So there are a few weaknesses here, but I do still think this has a decent shell and this is the closest I've got to being happy with the list so far. So let's have a little discussion. Uh, of course, Alter Creation is still a great GX attack that we will try and weave into a lot of situations. We have Auroras in here, we have a high Viridian count and we do play one Water Energy. Uh, so actually we have a good number of outs to get that energy in the opening stages, the raw count of the Auroras, plus Viridian, obviously you're sad if the water's prized, but you could then still go hunting with Dede and Research. Um, to try and get those energies. Of course, we are playing quite a high count of Viridian, not only because we are juggling four counts of energy here, but also we want to bounce uh, opposing Path of the Peaks because we want to have lots of abilities online, actually, not just the Dene, uh, also Oricorio and Moltres and stuff like that. These are all really important abilities to have online. So yeah, uh, Alter Creation still good, obviously, and Ultimate Ray, if you can get to that stage, is obviously still going to be beneficial for you to help power up some of your bench Pokemon. More often than not, you're gonna be looking to put down your Zacian or your Mawile, something like that. Even second ADP coming into play is something that you can go for with the Auroras being the way that you can fulfill extra water costs. So just something to bear in mind. We are still playing a couple energy switches. So there is a very small chance that you can get that turn one GX going second. We play far less metal energy now. We play just that one water and the Auroras. So it's very, very low chance uh, where we are at right now with the list to get the Wombo Combo Dream off. Um, so often you are settling for that turn two GX more often than not. You'll still obviously choose to go first with this archetype. And then you're hoping that we have more efficient attackers. Obviously Moltres powers itself up for a good element of its attack cost. Uh, Zapdos is just a one energy attachment. And we have the sources to try and pull the weight for the likes of Morwell and Zacian. So uh, yeah, you don't ultimate rate all that much. If you get the luxury of it, it's obviously fantastic for you. And the E-switches really are more in here for um, just some um, sort of number fixing with like, the likes of using your second Moltres all in one turn with one E-switch in there. Like if you saucer E-switch to, you know, from a metal Pokemon to your second Moltres, you could go turn attached dark, uh, dire wing flames. Oh, yeah, yeah, dire wing Dire Flame Wings and then E-Switch to Moltres to get like a burst KO kind of thing. Uh, and same thing for like Zapdos if your opponent is 
only got two Vs in play, you could E-switch to a Zapdos, attach that uh, Aurora or the Fighting, and then still get a Thunderous Kick, even if they're playing around it. So there's all, all sorts of different reasons why E-switch is good. Even at that two count, it's not likely you get that GX attack off, but it still has a lot of utility. Uh, so just something I wanted to bear in mind. It allows you to burst some attackers on the scene. Obviously, Moltres in general, if you're not attacking with it, will be stacking up energies naturally. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. So let's talk about some of the new cards then. The Galarian Moltres V, it's a stellar card. It's really, really insane, to be honest. The Dire Flame Wings ability, allowing you to attach a Dark uh, from your discard pile straight onto this guy. Once per turn is obviously very good. The Aurora or the Aura Burn for two Dark and a Colors does 190, and you do 30 to yourself. Not great that you're making yourself a lot more fragile and probably going to get instantly response KO'd in a lot of situations, but this Dark type coverage is obviously very good. There's a ton of Shadow Rider roaming around right now, so having weakness on the majority of their deck and having a Grass weakness means that it's not easy for Zapdos to be a tech card to KO this Moltres. It would really only be things like Mewtwo that is teched into Shadow Rider that can sort of tank hits in the first place. And uh, yeah, sometimes one Moltres gets the six prizes on his own. Uh, to be honest, he is very, very dangerous in that sort of matchup. It feels like against Ghost Rider, you will often not be using your GX attack with ADP. You're probably not putting ADP into play unless it's strange situations with your opponent's board state. You're probably just tunnel visioning into getting your Moltres rolling and trying to get the most out of your aura burns. So something to bear in mind there. In general, 190 damage is good. It can still deal with the uh, lone Dedenes and bats that are still uh, in some archetypes. And uh, with the buff of an ADP GX attack, it can deal with evolving V Pokemon as well. So is a utility card as well as a type coverage card. Same thing for Zapdos, really. Um, it's a fighting Pokemon that can do 170. It can help one energy attachment finish off things that you've maybe hit with Ultimate Ray or hit with more while something like that. Obviously, it's type coverage is in here for Eternatus. If you've done a GX buff, even for just the one attachment, Thunderous Kick is getting through even Big Charm. So, yeah, obviously very good here. And in a ton of matchups, it can be a one energy attacker, which is a really big deal uh, when we have energy scattered kind of all over the place and nothing's really set in stone. So having a Zapdos as a one energy option uh, to take prizes is obviously uh, very good for us. And next, we have our Metal. Uh, package. Now, it's not really ADPZ anymore. We are playing three different metal Pokemon. Uh, the Morwile's in here for a couple of reasons. Obviously, Captivating Wink can cheese some hands and bring stuff into play. Um, but really, it's because it's a two energy attacker here and only requires one metal, uh, which I think is a big deal. Uh, Wily Bite can still get those KOs on some lower hit point Pokemon, some one prize Pokemon, for example, uh, and is obviously hitting for weakness on Ice Rider Calyrex, which is a big deal. Your opponent does need to have uh, the full board, I think, they, no, they can have four in play, right, for you post-GX buff, um, for you to Wily Bite through them, which is fine, uh, just for two energy attacker. Um, the Aegislash and Zacian can both also one-shot Ice Rider, so we have a lot of metal coverage here. In general, the Saucer allows us to maintain presence in play, um, and Morwile is not only good into the Ice Rider matchup, it's also good into the Eterna matchup, as we've seen previously with regular ADPZ. Of course, you're looking for Zapdos more often than not, but if Zapdos is prized or anything else, you can still go down a Morwile route if need be to be that sort of interim attacker where you finish it off over like the course of a Morwile plus a Moltres play. So really, you only really need that one Zapdos swing if you're the first person taking initial prizes. Um, you know, they can take out the Zapdos, then you can two-shot their next VMAX with the combination of whatever you can scrounge together <laughs> is kind of the idea. Uh, so Morwile's good in that respect, just being a fairly cheap attacker. The Aegis Slash is in here, obviously, is a knee-jerk reaction to Decidueye, how good it's been so far. Uh, so this has one of the most robust win conditions against Desi right now because we have GX into Aegislash hitting uh, 160 and getting through their effects. So that can obviously change if you are expecting less Decidueye. Uh, but right now, I feel like it's worth respecting because it's done very well in recent tournaments. Uh, so it may be something that becomes a space later on and this deck really wants to make space. I'd probably make this like a second Zacian, uh, maybe third E-Switch, maybe Skylar. Those sorts of cards would be the first things on my wish list. Uh, so just something to bear in mind. Uh, if you're not a fan of playing the Age of Slash right now. One Zacian, uh, very strange to only see one copy of this card in here. Uh, it's still a great card to end on Intrepid Sword, especially if you are still going for traditional ADP game plan. Um, but it is just a pricey attacker in comparison to the things we have now. Obviously, its type coverage is insane into Ice Rider. Uh, you don't have to ask questions about how many Pokemon they have in play. Age of Slash is still that fallback, of course. Um, 
But uh, yeah, Zacian is just more stable damage, better into tag team matchups. So you could arguably try and fit a second copy of Zacian in here. It is obviously a very good card. We've seen that before. But when you only have the five metal energy, these sources are harder to scrounge in the opening turn. So he does become a little bit more pricey. You're oftentimes hoping to ultimate ray onto it or find some combination in the later stages. So he is more of a bit part player than the main attacker in the sort of approach these days. Uh, we are playing an Oracorio GX in here as well. Dance of the Tribute is such a good effect in this deck. Uh, even with Path of the Peak being kind of like a rife uh, option, we are playing a high stadium count. Um, and because we commit so many energies to these big threats, like Moltres has to be instantly dealt with by uh, Ghost Rider. Zapdos has to be instantly dealt with by Eternatus. So you always get the value of Dance of the Ancients, essentially, which is insane. Same thing for the Metal Attackers into the Ice Rider matchup. Because we are hitting so much for weakness, they literally see a threat that can detonate their entire board. They have to clear that off the uh, field straight away, leaving the Oracor uh, Oracorio to milk that value. Sometimes it gets six cards and that's obviously very good. And as we know, ADP only needs to attack a couple times uh, to close the game. So it can be pushing for your last sources, your E-switches, your uh, Viridian just to hit the right energy card or whatever, or it can be looking for boss as always. So that's always very good. Uh, I am playing Oranguru because we are playing lots of like one and two of Pokemon that you want to try and protect. Also, we have the upside of getting Intrepid Sword value. We have the upside of protecting uh, things like uh, sorcerers, E-switches, that sort of thing. Um, so it's not only protecting Pokemon, it's protecting all sorts. And it does mean we can play Mewtwo rather than uh, Eldegoss for our Mind Report win condition in the later stages. Eldegoss is just far less good with part of the peak being everywhere. So having Guru Mewtwo, because Guru often finds himself in play, is going to be overall more beneficial. We have a couple of Dene's in here. Um just to give ourselves some more push. Not everything's playing Path of the Peak. Having some discard synergy for Dark Energy and Metal Energy, both very good. And just in general, we want to have a ton of discard synergy. We have four Quick Ball, four Aurora, three Viridian, and we will not be afraid to use them because in a ton of matchups, you are tunnel visioning into just one or two attackers because they hit for times two weakness. So you, uh, you really want to tunnel in on those sorts of options. Outside of that, not too much to say. We have one of each energy that we can pick out from Viridian just to make it a little bit easier for those more outs. And Aurora is kind of that all-star that sits in the middle. So yeah, that is ADP Birds. I wanted to keep it as brief as possible, but uh, it's quite a peculiar deck for people looking from the outside in. So I had to give some explanation here and there. So apologies for that. Let's jump into a couple games now and uh, see how it is in action. Um, some of the hardest games I've had so far is with Rapid Strike Urshifu, because of course it's not one of those matchups where we hit for times two weakness. Um, we're not playing Mew right now. I feel like with uh, Rapid Strike Inteleon, it's less reasonable to play Mew in the format, um, especially because they can just Drizzle to turn one Gale Thrust, gust up the Mew quite often as well. Uh, so it feels like less good of a tech card. So that's why I'm not currently playing uh, the Mew. Um, <clears throat> haven't found very many easy ways to improve the Urshi matchup just yet. That's one of the few matchups that I think is a thorn in the side for this archetype right now. But I think its bases are covered just via weakness in a lot of situations. So we'll see how this goes. Our opponent is going to go ahead. They're playing a Turner, of course. They're going to go ahead and go Moltres E-Turn. Uh, so we naturally have, obviously, a very, very good hand um, with the Zapdos plays. Um... We could just bench Zapdos, attach and pass. Making them have a lot of things to try and deal with us next turn. And put puts them like in a really bad spot. So I think it's just going to be a casual Zapdos, attach, pass. We have both in the deck, which is chill. Um, this could force him to try and go Moltres attacking eventually. But I'm not too worried about that. We already have the basic energy, so I'll swing that on. I think we can just pass here. Don't need to overplay this hand, I don't think. Aurora's a really good card for me. Do I, I mean, I could continue to go fishing. I'm not expecting too much from the opponent. I could start thinning out some energy cards. I think the first thing I'd usually go for in this matchup will be Dark Energy, because I want to put my own Moltres down to Moltres his Moltres once he's moltres my Zapdos. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We get some cards that are fairly useless. We could continue to dig, just because... When we have useless cards, you just want to get rid of all of them in play so that you are left with only useful cards. Let's go ahead and dump some more. Ending on Intrepid Sword would never be a bad thing if we could get to that. We do get the Moltres, so we do get an attachment in for free with a Dire Flame. Could Guru to protect a card? Guru could also be my active Pokemon rather than Oracorio, because I'm only expecting to put two prizes into play here. 
Um, it makes it easier for him to take a one prize KO, but if we're not using a three prizer, it's not a big deal for us anyway. Let's go ahead and put the Saucer to the top of the deck. Another Viridian is not a bad draw for us. Uh, we have the option to Dele Change next turn. So it's pretty okay. Obviously, we're putting a ton of pressure on here. He can't just go ahead and VMAX and swing and do whatever else. It would require a bonkers, like, he'd have to, like, Crobat attach, maybe proactively boss and hit a lot of Pokemon to take a Zapdos KO here. Even if he does, we have Oracorio and Dedene and potentially supporters on the other end of the hand. We'll see where he wants to go. Okay, they are going to go boss. So they're going to go Crobat Fishing. They can Viridian a card away and draw five. They choose to take the energy to only draw four cards. They're at 15. This feels like a very bad decision. Uh, I definitely don't want to draw back into sources too much. Let's put this back in before I cherish. Well, boss is very good to hold on to, I think. Let's go ahead and get this out. We do still have two boss in the deck and the Mewtwo. Uh, so I could be happy to Dede change here. Let's just quickly do this stuff. Don't need to overplay too much. We do not have any Quick Balls prized. Just thinking if it's worth sitting on. I mean, we can take the three, he takes the two, we take the two back. <clears throat> then we just need to find a way to close the game on like this. Which could just be more while actually, thinking about it. So let's hold the hand. I don't think I necessarily even need another Zapdos to win this game. I think one Thunderous Kick will be enough to win. We'll go Eton, Moltres, and Evoltol as our win condition probably. <clears throat> with a lot of draw in the back to try and help us get there with Oracorio, Dedene, etc. So we're getting Marnie down here. Do you want to quick ball, which is pretty nutty? how wide they want to go with their board. They probably don't want to make a VMAX here. You can put Hooper down. Hooper can take a KO here. But it's a one prize Pokemon, so that kind of helps us. I'm not sure how good this is. So I can Moltres his... Crobat now, because I could quick ball Mewtwo boss. Oh no, we didn't play the boss, did we? Okay. Let's see what we get off the Oracorio and plan accordingly. Just considering whether I'm wor it's worth quick balling first here. That's probably not. Let's dance first. So there is the boss option. <clears throat> um, alternative path is just to more wild KO here. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. 
I have one metal in the discard pile right now. I can make it two with the Viridian. Also gives us good prompt on what his hand is looking like. <clears throat> Let's bring this guy down. So he doesn't have boss in hand. And he doesn't have Marnie in hand either. So this should be a wrap, right? this this is looking like a lock they have to top deck exactly Marnie or boss for us to not immediately win or Crobat, I guess. Or any ball search. They have a lot of draws, actually, to not instantly lose, but... Ah, they actually have the quick ball in hand, so we have opened up the board space for them to still bat into some stuff. Maybe we're not completely home and dry, but we're still in a really good spot here. Haven't played a single boss yet. If he attacks with Moltres, it just dies to our Moltres, so he has to gust, I guess, right? Or he has to attack with this and hope I can't find Zapdos. I just have so many win conditions. <clears throat> win conditions everywhere. Alright, there is a Marnie. So he has to find E-Switch to attack with E turn and then we have to miss aurora energy off of 10 cards with oracorio research i okay, guess so he's passing uh we can win this turn we've used both the dene so i can't go digging deep um it could be an opportunity for us to biggie to gx here Um, I could just, yeah, research and Big Eater. That feels like a pretty safe play. some extra dark in the bin while I'm at it. Uh, we know that Cherish Ball is no longer a helpful card. Let's get rid of it. Uh, they have four Vs in play, so I never need to attach anywhere but here. I guess if I attach to Zapdos, it plays around some stuff. Let's actually quickly do this. I'm going to try and play as many useless cards as I can here. Attaching to Zapdos comes with the exact downside of him crowbatting back into boss after I biggie to this. Because uh, we currently don't have the boss. Oh, yeah, we don't have boss because we still haven't discarded any somehow. I mean, I still have Oricorio. Yeah, maybe I should just attach this. I think Big Eater is more winning than uh, other players here. So now their hand is terrible.
Yeah, okay. That felt like a lock as soon as they V-maxed, to be honest. Let's get one more game in. We are trying to capitalize on Etern, Shadow, Ice. Those are our three main decks that we're trying to target. We also hard target Decidueye as well pretty he uh, pretty heftily right now, the way the list is. I think with this hand we'll start Moltres. So this is going to be a Shadow Rider. The thing to bear in mind against Shadow Rider is to not over play your trainers, because that's how you get hit by Horror House KO. They oftentimes go aggro Gengar like pretty quick against you. Yeah, already seeing it. So I think I still will Intrepid Sword here, because he could grow our hand anyway with Horror House. So I think we're just cutting the Metal, playing the Sorcerer, playing the E-Switch, uh, turn attaching to Moltres. going to grow our hand quite substantially but I think it's the right thing to do I guess he could be going for Horror House into like Marnie plays as well Marnie Nightwatch plays so I think we may go very low here and just top the hand back up Expecting him fully to uh, Horror House here. The only other thing that would have been like better for us is if we had an extra discard for the Dire Flame, right? We could have attacked this turn, theoretically. They are going to Marnie us. But we're going to go even higher with the Horror House. So looking fairly healthy for us so far. Very healthy. have to debate whether it's worth paying retreat in case he wants to do any other attack and I'm pretty sure it's always not So 150 is a really poor number into us. It means we can aura burn and not get knocked out by ourselves. 200 would be a much better number for him here, obviously. Any any number higher than 150 would be really good. <laughs> we surprisingly don't actually play that many trainers compared to like old ADPs. We play, what is it, 14 energy? 14 Pokemon? Much less than the conventional. I'm surprised he puts down our creamy because we have a Zashian. But hey. Do see the research. Get rid of a few switches. And then it's going to hit us for 150 and see the bad news. We do not have boss in hand though, which is the bad news for him. Um, do I want to do anything with my other Pokemon? We always put the Moltres down, of course. 
you always attach here. ADP can go. I think we're just meant to research. I really want to find a Viridian for a Dark Energy here. That's a shame. At least we get the Sorcerer. I can do a few discards actually here. I might be dead chaining this in all honesty. We can thin a lot of cards. Get the fresh hand. Still need discard energy for dark energies. There we go. That's helpful for sure. Because we are yet to use the uh, the dire flame. So now we're threatening game on both fronts, right? We're threatening the. Zashin for game if he makes a creamy, and we're threatening backup Moltres for game if he attacks with Shadow Rider. So, Al Creamy is just another type coverage we gain. <laughs> Looking pretty good for us, I'd say. This does kind of make a mockery of the top three decks in the format right now. As long as you hit your pieces in a timely fashion. So yeah, they're not even able to do any hand disruption whatsoever. Oh, they're going to Underworld Dawn now? Okay. They have to stamp us to make it at least a little bit close here, right? Marnie. Need to draw back into any energy card. No bells and whistles required. 380. Easy KO. So yeah, a couple uh, final thoughts on the deck. Uh, you are playing some really important like one and two ofs in the list, which is quite awkward. I've thought about um, a few cards, actually. I've thought about Ordinary Rod. I've thought about Clara being an option. Um, I've thought about, obviously, Marshadow could be a big deal uh, to help protect even more against uh, Stadium, of course. Uh, thought about Skylar, thought about all sorts of different things. Great catcher, just like normal ADP, likes at different times. But this is a shell that's been working fairly okay for me so far. Let me know how ADP Burst has been going for you. As always, you know what I'm like. Even though this is a really messy concept and there's a lot going on here, I have tried to fashion it down to its core concept as much as possible um, to try and get the best out of it. So let me know your thoughts. Hope you did enjoy. And let me know your overall uh, opinion on ADP. Are you still playing it? Are you trying out this wacky energy package or are you just moving on to other decks? Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in another video soon. Cheers.